In this video, I'd like to talk about the difference between artificial intelligence that's typically used for video games and artificial intelligence that is typically used for other types of devices. I'm going to put those into two different categories. One I'm going to call game AI, which is the AI that we use for video games. The other grouping I'm going to call academic, academic AI. Now game AI, this is all the artificial intelligence that you'd see in your typical video game. It's the enemies that you are fighting against, it's the other player when you're playing a chess game or any type of uh, digital board game. And academic AI, this is uh, probably more of the traditional research that would be around artificial intelligence. Um, items in this field would be any of the personal assistants that you have at home that you can talk to the, uh, the Google Home devices or Alexa devices. This encompasses self-driving cars, um, any sort of field of robotics. Um, this is uh, more of the traditional academic AI. Game AI is what you'll find in any sort of interactive real-time simulations where you have a player and the goal is fun. Academic AI is any of the artificial intelligence that you'd find in any of those systems I just mentioned, where the goal is something a little bit deeper. Now, artificial intelligence in general is essentially trying to replicate human thinking. So both of these have that same goal in that regard. Game AI is taking the place of a human, where a human would potentially be playing the game, and academic AI is taking the place of a human or human thought um, with some of those other devices. A human could be driving that self-driving car. A human could be responding to any of those uh, device prompts when you're talking to any of the, the, um, your devices at home. A game AI uh, could be played by a human. All the people that you're you know, playing against when you're playing chess or any digital board game or potentially the, the creatures that you're fighting against or even the boss monsters, those could all be controlled by a human playing the game. So both these have similar goals in that regard. They're imitating intelligence or human intelligence. Game AI has the ultimate goal of being fun and entertaining. This goal of being fun and entertaining essentially overrides any of the other goals of the artificial intelligence that is being developed. Over here in academic AI, the, the research here is typically trying to emulate human thinking as best as possible, right? So this is going for more of an accuracy in emulation. These are probably the biggest differences between the two. Another thing about game AI is that we're running on limited resources, right? Now, what I mean by limited resources is our AI is running on a device, an Xbox or a cell phone or a tablet like this one. And this thing doesn't have, uh, it needs to be quick. It needs to be responsive. Academic AI can typically default or use large server machines or other sorts of um, sort of unlimited resource pools in order to come up with better evaluation or better accuracy in this emulation. If to develop an AI assistant that is aiding in uh, identification of various cancers in a hospital, that would not be something that you would probably run on a small device like this. The algorithms that you would probably use for that would be something that you might offload to a larger server that has you know, much, much, much higher limits when it comes to CPU and memory and uh, processing power in general. The academic AI is trying to solve problems uh, in the best way that they probably can without this consideration of limited resources. The game AI is trying to solve fun and entertaining reactions with this idea of limited resources in mind. Now, game AI needs to be, because it's fun and entertaining, it might not always be accurate, right? It might not always be accurate. And what I mean by this is there's a very classic example in Mario Kart. 
the AI that is behind the player, or the AI that is further behind, actually gets boosts and is kind of cheating in the game in some way. And the AI that is up in front uh, actually is sort of penalized for being up in front. Now, this balance of the AI is achieving that more ultimate goal of fun and entertaining gameplay. And it does that by sort of taking the people in front and limiting them in some way and taking the people in back and boosting them in some way. So you get this nice competitive game. You also see this sort of thing when you are fighting against enemies and it may spawn more enemies against you when you are more of a powerful player to keep the everything fun and entertaining. Academic AI isn't quite like that. Academic AI is always shooting for this accuracy. They're not trying to, they're not trying to provide a great experience for the person interacting with this thing. Uh, they're trying to provide accuracy um, as if there was some genuine human thought behind what is happening. The goal of game AI is to just create this illusion of artificial intelligence, which means that some of the stuff that we're doing is not really considered real AI by some researchers. This AI here, with that ultimate goal of accuracy, uh, is going to be using a lot of heavy lifting algorithms and well-studied data structures, whereas if you can sort of cheat your way to get the results that you want here with Game AI, and it feels good to the player, right? It goes back to that fun and entertaining bullet point. If it feels good to the player, then you've achieved your goal. Right? Whereas in the academic and research AI field, if you achieve accuracy, then you've achieved your ultimate goal.